Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're going down an interesting rabbit hole. I wanted to discuss Orion as it's discussed in the Law of One material, end quote. Orion is interesting because it's explained as the negative entity in the Law of One material. If this is your first time hearing about the Law of One material or the raw material, check out my previous episodes. I have a brief synopsis of the Law of One, as well as several others that try to explain what it is. Very difficult. It's like trying to explain the Bible in a paragraph. It's essentially a channeled work that was given in the 80s by a group of three people, one that was completely out, one that was a scribe and wrote down the information, and one that asked questions. The information is very interesting and mind-expanding, and you have to take it for what you think it is. I have had several episodes where I've discussed it, just so I can learn about it. I'm in the process of learning about this information. And so in my process of learning, I'm able to teach you what I've learned. And so I wanted to read some of the material that's in the Law of One that talks about the Orion. This is very fascinating. I think that this part of the Law of One is something that really lights up my mind and makes me think what's going on when they say that the universe is like Star Wars, but more complicated, more intense than Star Wars itself. Orion would essentially be the Sith, the negative polarity. In the Bringers of Dawn material, the Pleiadians talk about having a huge battle over the Earth and some negative federation won and stripped us of our DNA. In the Law of One material, they talk about a confederation of planets in service of the one infinite creator. A lot of other channeled material out there that you'll find on YouTube refers to a galactic federation of light. As I've read this, I've found several references to the Council of Orion or Orion Council in relation to the Galactic Federation of Light. So it's very possible that the Galactic Federation of Light is the opposing federation to the Confederation. So sometimes when you hear this material, it sounds so uplifting and love-oriented. So there's a real question. Is there one of these federations that are trying to deceive us? One is saying that they're the good guys and they're not. One is saying they're not the good guys. So the best thing that we can do is take this information in for ourselves and we use the information that we receive to make our own judgment. All I can say is we're living in a world of duality. You can tell from the moment you're born, you have two parts of your brain takes two people to create a human there's light and dark this density that we're in invites duality good and evil so when the law of one material explains the evolution of the earth and the universe it explains there are galactic federations and some of them could be what you would term evil or of the negative polarity in the law of one material It's explained essentially that we're given one choice while we're in the third density. We're choosing either service to self or service to others. And the service to self is really the negative or what you would call evil faction, although evil doesn't really exist. But this negative polarity is very much different than what's described as the positive polarity. So it it would be interesting if the negative polarity is calling themselves a galactic federation of light. It is said and implied that the Orion Federation is really, really good at manipulation. So they're not going to show up like the society of evil. They're not going to be the Justice League of total pure evil. They're not going to be that obvious. They're going to appear as messengers of light. So then we're going to have to enter a period of time where we have to go within and judge for ourselves. All that I can do is bring information out. And the raw material talks about the Orion group. And so let's read through some of that and then read through some of the material that Quo says. And we can judge for ourselves what we think of this. Also, I don't know if this episode's been released yet, but if you get a chance, as a side note, I suggest that you listen to the episode Carlos Castaneda 
on the assemblage point and the non-organic beings as a third way to interpret channeled information. A lot of times we're just getting information that we want to hear. It may not be real. It may be another form of manipulation on a whole other level or not. But the law of one material indicated first, we get a reference in the seventh session about Orion. Now in this one, they're asking a different question. I want to read it first so that you get the reference that they're talking about. Don Elkins, who is the questioner, asks, I'm interested in the application of the law of one as it pertains to free will and what I would call the advertising done by UFO contact with the planet. That is, the council has allowed the quarantine to be lifted many times over the past 30 years. This seems to me to be a form of advertising for what we are doing right now so that more people will be awakened. Am I correct? Ra then says, it will take a certain amount of untangling of conceptualization of your mental complex to reform your query into an appropriate response. Please bear with us. The Council of Saturn has not allowed the breaking of quarantine in the time-slash-space continuum you mentioned. There is a certain amount of landing taking place. Some of these landings are of your peoples. Some are of the entities known to you as the Group of Orion. Secondly, there is permission granted not to break quarantine by dwelling among you, but to appear in thought form capacity for those who have eyes to see. Now, I think it's important that we get this first reference because it is implying that the Council of Nine on Saturn, which in the Law of One material is explained as the council that rules over the solar system, they are implying the council is above both the Confederation and the Galactic Federation, but then in other parts it's implied that the Confederation is part of this council. In any case, they're at the level where they're judging negative and, and positive polarity evenly. So this means the council on Saturn is okay with the influences of multiple different federations and they're basically just allowing Earth to be manipulated both by positive and negative groups. So in the next question, Don Elkins asks, I'll just ask you about Orion. You mentioned Orion as a source of some of the contacts of UFOs. Can you tell me something of that contact, its purpose? I am raw. Consider, if you will, a simple explanation of intentions which are bad slash good. This example is Adolf. This is your vibratory sound complex. The intention is to presumably unify by choosing the distortion complex called Elite from a social memory complex and then enslaving by various effects those who are seen as the distortion of not elite. This is then the concept of taking the social memory complex thus weeded and adding it to a distortion thought of by the so-called Orion group as an empire. The problem facing them is that they face a great deal of random energy released by the concept of separation. This causes them to be vulnerable as the distortions amongst their members are not harmonized. Don Elkins then asks, what is the density of the Orion group? Ross says, like the Confederation, the densities of the mass consciousnesses which comprise that group are varied. There are very few third density, a large number of fourth density, a similarly larger number of fifth density and very few sixth density entities comprising this organization. Their numbers are perhaps one tenth hours at any one point in the space time continuum as the problem of spiritual entropy causes them to experience constant disintegration of their social memory complexes. Their power is the same as ours. The law of one blinks neither at the light or the darkness, but is available for service to others and service to self. However, service to others results in service to self, thus preserving and further harmonizing the distortions of those entities seeking intelligent infinity through these disciplines. Those seeking intelligent infinity through the use of service to self create the amount of power, but as we said, have constant difficulty because of the concept of separation which is implicit in the manifestations of the service to self which involve power over others. This weakens 
and eventually disintegrates the energy collected by such mind-body-spirit complexes who call the Orion Group and the social memory complexes which comprise the Orion Group. It should be noted, carefully pondered, and accepted that the Law of One is available to any social memory complex which has decided to strive together for any seeking of purpose, be it service to others or service to self. The laws, which are the primal distortions of the Law of One, then are placed into operation and the illusion of space-time is used as a medium for the development of the results of these choices freely made. Thus, all entities learn, no matter what they seek, all learn the same, some rapidly, some slowly. So here we get the explanation of spiritual entropy that occurs with negative polarity groups. It's sort of like a Game of Thrones existence, where they're constantly taking each other out in service to themselves, which causes the social memory complex to collapse and the groups to collapse because they're incapable of working together, but they work through manipulation of others, and that only goes so far. There is much larger group in service to others, and they have equal power. We may not be aware of that on our planet, for what we see in our physical manifestation on Earth is a lot of the effects of this negative entities. They go on to ask, using it as an example of fifth density group or social memory complex of the Orion group, what was their previous density before they became fifth density? The progress through the densities is sequential. A fifth density social memory complex would be comprised of mind-body-spirit complexes harvested from fourth density. Then the conglomerate or mass mind body spirit complex does its melding and the results are due to the infinitely various possibilities of combination of distortions. Elkins asks, I'm trying to understand how a group such as the Orion group would progress. I was of the opinion that a closer understanding of the law one created the condition of acceptability moving say from our third density to the fourth density in our transition now. And I'm trying to understand how it would be possible if you're in the Orion group and pointed towards self-service. How would you progress, say, from the third density to the fourth? What learning would be necessary for that? Ross states, you will recall that we went into some detail as to how those not oriented towards seeking service for others yet, nevertheless, found and could use the gateway to intelligent infinity. This is true at all densities in our octave. We cannot speak for those above us, as you would say, in the next quantum or octave of beingness. This is, however, true of this octave of densities. The beings are harvested because they can see and enjoy the light, love, of the appropriate density. Those who have found this light love, love light without benefit of a desire for service nevertheless, by the law of free will, have the right to use of that light love for whatever purpose. Also, it may be inserted that there are systems of study which enable the seeker of separation to gain these gateways. This study is as difficult as the one which we have described to you, but there are those with perseverance to pursue the study just as you desire to pursue the difficult path of seeking to know in order to serve. The distortion lies in the fact that those who seek to serve the self are seen by the law of one as precisely the same as those who seek to serve others for all are not one. To serve yourself and to serve others is a dual method of saying the same thing if you can understand the essence of the law of one. So there's an implication of deep study that's required in third density for you to gain your power and in fourth density through some kind of study where you separate yourself and find some level of magic. They go on to ask in another session, what do the Orion group have? What's the objective with respect to the conquest of the Orion group? As we have said previously, Ross says, their objective is to locate certain mind-body-spirit complexes which vibrate in resonance with their own vibrational complex, then to enslave the unelite, as you may call those who are not of the Orion vibration. What do the Crusaders do? Is asked in the 11th session. Ross says the Crusaders move in their chariots to conquer planetary mind-body-spirit social complexes before they reach the stage of achieving social memory. They then ask, then we have Crusaders from Orion coming to this planet for mind control purposes? 
how do they do this? Ra states, as all, they follow the law of one observing free will. Contact is made with those who call. Those then upon the planetary sphere act as much as do you to disseminate the attitudes and philosophy of their particular understanding of the law of one, which is service to self. These become the elite. Through these, the attempt begins to create a condition whereby the remainder of the planetary entities are enslaved by their own free will. And here we see the purpose and power of the Orion group trying to control the mind to enslave them by their own free will, meaning you use your power against you. That's what they do. With your own free will, you give up your power. That's what they're good at. They go on to ask, can you name any of the recipients of the Crusaders? That is, any names that may be known on the planet today. Ross says, I'm desirous of being in non-violation of the free will distortion. To name those involved in the future of your space-time is to infringe. Thus, we withhold this information. We request your contemplation of the fruits of the actions of those entities whom you may observe enjoying the distortion towards power. In this way, you may discern for yourself this information. We shall not interfere with the, shall we say, planetary game. It is not central to the harvest. So here we have two important points. Ra is saying, don't worry about all that stuff. Who's in power? It's not essential for your harvest. It's not essential to the harvest of the planet. It's just a game. The planet is a game between these negative and positive polarities. But it does say, even though we don't know who on this planet is of the negative, if you see people that are enjoying power, that are distorted towards power, that are seeking out power, you can probably assume that they're of the negative polarity question, how did the crusaders pass on their concepts to the incarnate individuals on earth? Ross says there are two main ways, just as there are two main ways of, shall we say, polarizing towards service to others. There are those mind-body-spirit complexes upon your plane who do exercises and perform disciplines in order to seek contact with sources of information and power leading to the opening of the gate to intelligent infinity. There are others who whose vibratory complex is such that this gateway is opened and contact with total service to self with its primal distortion of manipulation of others is then afforded with little or no difficulty, no training and no control. So some people it takes some work and some people it just happens naturally. Question, what type of information is passed on from the crusaders to these people? The Orion group passes on information concerning the law of one with the orientation of service to self. The information can become technical, just as some in the Confederation, in attempts to aid this planet in service to others, have provided what you would call technical information. The technology provided by this group is in the form of various means of control or manipulation of others to serve the self. Who knows what efforts are being made to control the Earth, but they are using technologies of control question. I don't know if this is a short question or not, so we can save till next time. But my only question is why the crusaders from Orion do this? What is their ultimate objective? Ra says, to serve the self is to serve all. The service of the self, when seen in this perspective, requires an ever-expanding use of the energies of others for manipulation to the benefit of the self with distortion towards power. In the next session, they ask, continuing with the previous session, the Orion Crusaders came here in chariots. Would you describe a chariot? Ross says, The term chariot is a term used in warfare among your peoples. That's its significance. The shape of their Orion craft is one of the following. Firstly, the elongated ovoid shape, which is of a darker nature than silver, but which has a metallic appearance. If seen in the light, in the absence of light, it appears to be red or fiery in some manner. Other craft include disc-shaped objects of a small nature, approximately 12 feet in your measurement in diameter. The box-like shape approximately 40 feet to your side in your measurement. Other craft can take on a desired shape through the use of thought control mechanisms. There are various civilization complexes which work within this group. Some are more able to use intelligent infinity than others. The information is very seldom shared, therefore the chariots vary greatly in shape and appearance. They ask, is there any effort by the Confederation to stop the Orion chariots from arriving here? 
Ross says every effort is made to quarantine this planet. However, the network of guardians, much like any other pattern of patrols on whatever level, does not hinder each and every entity from penetrating quarantine. For if request is made in light love, the law of one will be met with acquiescence. If their request is not made due to the slipping through the net, then there is penetration of this net. How does the Confederation stop the Orion Chariot from coming through the quarantine? What actions? Ross says there is contact at the level of light form or light body being depending upon the vibratory level of the guardian. These guardians sweep reaches of your Earth's energy fields, attempting to be aware of any entities approaching. An entity which is approaching is hailed in the name of the one creator. Any entity thus hailed is bathed in love light and will of free will obey the quarantine due to the power of the law of one. This is a very important passage from the law of one material that you should definitely go back and listen to. This gives you the secret to deal with any negative entity. The negative entities are afraid of positive entities that are aware of the law of one because you can bathe them in love and light and they cannot resist. They will of their own free will. Once they're bathed in the love and light, they'll walk away. You depolarize them. You can change them. So if you encounter another being, the greatest weapon you have is to provide love to them. Imagine that they are you and bathe them in love light and they will disappear. That is how the guardians will challenge them if they try to get into the earth's atmosphere. They ask what would happen to the entity if he did not obey the quarantine after being hailed. Ross says to not obey a quarantine after being hailed on the level of which we speak would be equivalent to your not stopping upon walking into a solid brick wall. That is the power of the love light. You just stop in a brick wall. Question, what would happen to the entity then if he did this? What had happened to his chariot? The creator is one being, Ross says. The vibratory level of those able to reach the quarantine boundaries is such that upon seeing the love light net, it is impossible to break this law. Therefore, nothing happens. No attempt is made. There is no confrontation. The only beings who are able to penetrate the quarantine are those who discover windows or distortions in the space-time continua surrounding your planet's energy fields. Through these windows, they come. These windows are rare and unpredictable. And another question. You mentioned the Orion Crusaders, when they do get through the net, give both technical and non-technical information. We know that you mean by technical information, but what type of non-technical information do they give to those they contact? Am I right in assuming that this is all done by telepathic communication? Ross says this is correct. Through telepathy, the philosophy of the law of one with the distortion of service to self is promulgated. In advanced groups, there are rituals and exercises given, and these have been written down just as the service to others oriented entities have written down the promulgated philosophy of their teachers. The philosophy concerns the service of manipulating others that they may experience service towards the other self, thus through this experience becoming able to appreciate service to self. These entities thus would become oriented towards service to self and in turn manipulate yet others so that they in turn might experience the service towards the other self. Question. Would this be the origin of what we call black magic? Ross says this is correct in one sense, incorrect in another. The Orion group has aided the so-called negatively oriented among your mind-body-spirit complexes. These same entities would be concerning themselves with service to self in any case, and there are many upon your so-called inner planes which are negatively oriented and thus available as inner teachers or guides and so-called possessors of certain souls who seek this distortion of service to self. Question, is it possible for an entity here on Earth to be so confused as to call both the Confederation and the Orion group in an alternating way, one then another, back. It is entirely possible, Ross says, for the untuned channel, as you call that service, to receive both positive and negative communications. If the entity at the base of its confusion is oriented towards service to others, the entity will begin to receive messages of doom. If the entity at the base of the complex of beingness is oriented towards service to self, the crusaders, who in this case do not find it necessary to lie, will simply begin to give the philosophy they are here to give. Many of your so-called contacts among your peoples have been confused and self-destructive because the channels were oriented towards service to others, but in the desire for proof, were open to the lying information of the crusaders who then were able to neutralize the effectiveness of the channel. 
are most of these crusaders fourth density? There is a majority of fourth density that is correct. Are there any confederation or Orion individuals living on earth visible to us and important in our society at this time walking among us? Ross says there are no entities of either group walking among you at this time. However, the crusaders of Orion use two types of entities to do their bidding, shall we say. The first type is a thought form. The second is a kind of robot. Question. Could you describe the robot? Ra says, the robot may look like any other being. It is a construct. So it's fascinating. There are people amongst us that you may see that are thought forms or robots that are not real. The reason these are safer to put out there is that they could accidentally run into somebody with the power of the positive polarity and they won't get depolarized. So you get the feeling that the Orion group has to work through back channels and cannot confront you directly because they know they can be depolarized. So they manipulate others to do their bidding. They manipulate others. They use thought forms. And in this case, they say they use robots. Question, who are the men in black? Ross says the men in black are a thought form type of entity, which have some beingness to their makeup. They have certain physical characteristics given them. However, their true vibrational nature is without third density vibrational characteristics, and therefore they are able to materialize and dematerialize when necessary. Question, are all of these men in black then used by the Orion Crusaders? This is correct, Ross says. Question, if one were to visit me and I grabbed him and locked him in a closet, could I keep him or would he disappear? Ross says, it depends upon which type of entity you grab. You're perhaps able to perceive a construct. The construct might be kept for a brief period, although these constructs also have an ability to disappear. The programming on these constructs, however, makes it more difficult to remotely control them. You would not be able to grapple with the thought form entity of the men in black, as you call it, type. Question, if the Confederation landed on Earth, they would be taken as gods, breaking the law of free will and thus reducing their polarization towards service to all. I assume that the same thing would happen if the Orion group landed. How would this affect their polarization towards service to self if they were able to land and become known as gods? Ross says, in the event of mass landing the Orion group, the effect of polarization would be strongly towards an increase in service to self, precisely the opposite of the former opportunity which you mentioned. Question, if the Orion group was able to land, would this increase their polarization? What I'm trying to get at is, is it better for them to work behind the scenes and get recruits, shall we say, from our planet? The person on our planet going towards service to self strictly on his own, using his free will, or is it just as good for the Orion group to land upon our planet and demonstrate remarkable powers and get people like that. Ross says the first instance is in the long run, shall we put it, more salubrious for the Orion group in that it does not infringe upon the law of one by landing and then does its work through those of this planet. In the second circumstance, a mass landing could create a loss of polarization due to the infringement upon the free will of the planet. However, it would be a gamble. If the planet then were conquered and became part of the empire, the free will would then be reestablished. This is restrained in action due to the desire of the Orion group to progress towards the one creator. This desire to progress inhibits the group from breaking the law of confusion. Question. You mentioned the word empire in relation to the Orion group. I have thought for some time that the movie Star Wars was somehow an allegory in part for what is actually happening. Is this correct? Ross says, this is correct. In the same way that a simple children's story is an allegory for physical slash philosophical slash social complex distortion understanding. Question. Well, the Confederation established its quarantine, I understand, 75,000 years ago. Has the Orion group been attempting to contact any part of this planet prior to that, or did they, or how long have they been attempting to contact this planet? I am Ra approximately four five thousand years ago an attempt was made it was not successful approximately two six oh oh two thousand six hundred years ago the group sent an entity of social memory complex to this planetary sphere this effort met with some success but was in the space-time continuum lessened in impact since approximately two three oh oh or two thousand three hundred years ago in your measurement this group was constantly working upon the harvest just as the confederation Ra corrected these dates in session 17 they should be 3600 and 3300 years ago respectively question can you name the entity 
they sent here 2,600 years ago. 2,600 years ago? The correct time frame is 3,600 years. This entity named by your peoples, Yahweh. Question, can you tell me the origin of the Ten Commandments? Ross says, the origin of these commandments follow the law of negative entities impressing information upon positively oriented mind-body-spirit complexes. The information attempted to copy or ape positivity while retaining negative characteristics. Question, was this done by the Orion group? Ross says, I am raw, this is correct. Question, what was their purpose in doing this? Ross says, the purpose of the Orion group, as mentioned before, is conquest and enslavement. This is done by finding and establishing an elite and causing others to serve the elite through various devices such as the laws you mention and others given by this entity. Question, was the recipient of the laws of the Ten Commandments positively or negatively oriented? Ross says the recipient was one of extreme positivity, thus accounting for some of the pseudo-positive characteristics of the information received. As with contacts which are not successful, this entity, vibratory complex, Moishe, did not remain a credible influence among those who had first heard the philosophy of one, and this entity was removed from this third density vibratory level in a lessened or saddened state, having lost what you may call the honor and faith with which he had begun the conceptualization of the law of one and the freeing of those who were of his tribes as they were called at that time space question if this entity was positively oriented how was the orion group able to contact him ross says this was an, an intensive shall we say battleground between positively oriented forces of confederation origin and negatively oriented sources the one called moishe was open to impression and received the law of one in its most simple form. However, the information became negatively oriented due to his people's pressure to do specific physical things in the third density planes. This left the entity open for the type of information and philosophy of a self-service nature. Question, does the Orion group use this principle to create conditions brought about to suit their purpose? Ross says, we will answer more specifically than the question. The Orion group uses daydreams of hostile or other negative vibratory natures to feed back or strengthen these thought forms. Question. Do they ever use any, shall I say, gratifications of the physical body to amplify such daydreams? Ross says, they are able to do this only when there is a strong ability on the part of the receiving mind-body-spirit complex towards the perception of thought forms. This could be termed an unusual characteristic, but has indeed been a method used by Orion entities. Question. I want to clear up a point here. When there was a contact by the Orion group, in years, as we have said, the Orion group attempted contact approximately 60,000 of your years in the past as you measure time. Question. I'm sorry, I meant the first attempt in the second major cycle. I'm now working in the second 25,000 years. How many years ago was the Orion group's attempt in that cycle? The Orion group next attempted in more fertile territory approximately 3,600 of your years in the past as you measure time. Question. In other words, there was no attempt 46,000 years ago by the Orion group to contact. Is that correct? This is correct. Question. In another session, I have a question about how the Orion group got in 3,600 years ago. How did they get through the quarantine? Was that a random window effect? Ross says, at that time, this was not entirely so, as there was a proper calling for this information. When there is a mixed calling, the window effect is much more put into motion by the ways of the densities. The quarantine in this case was, shall we say, not patrolled so closely due to the lack of strong polarity, the windows thus needing to be very weak in order for penetration. As your harvest approaches, these forces of what you would call light work according to their call. The ones of Orion have the working only according to their call. This calling is in actuality not nearly as great. Thus, due to the way of empowering or squares, there is much resistance to penetration. Yet free will must be maintained and those desiring negatively oriented information, as you would call it, must then be satisfied by those moving through the window of fact. Essentially, they're saying that some randomness is allowed by the law of one. I guess. So in the next question, did the Orion group use similar methods for their impression 3,600 years ago? 
the group or empire had an emissary in your skies at that time. Can you describe that emissary? This emissary was of your fiery nature, which was hidden by the nature of cloud in the day. This was to obliterate the questions of those seeing such a vehicle and to make it consonant with these entities' concept of what you may call the Creator. So, the craft hid behind a cloud, and it looked like a cloud in the sky. Question. And then how was the impression or information passed on to the entities after they saw this fiery cloud? Ross says, by thought transfer, and by the causing of fiery phenomena and other events to appear as being miraculous through the use of thought forms. Question. Then there were any prophets that we have now recorded that spring from this era or soon after it? Ross says, those of the empire were not successful in maintaining their presence for long after the approximate 3,000 year date in your history and were perforce left with the decision to physically leave the skies. The so-called prophets were often given mixed information, but the worst that the Orion group could do was to cause these prophets to speak of doom as prophecy. In those days was the occupation of those who love their fellow beings and wish only to be of service to them and to the Creator. Question, could you tell me if you're saying the Orion group was successful in polluting, shall we say, some of the positively oriented prophets with messages of doom? Ross says, this is correct. Question, could you tell me why the Orion group had to leave after, I believe, it figures to be 600 year period? Why they had to vacate? Although the impression that they had been given to those who called them was that these entities were an elite group, that which you know as diaspora occurred, causing much dispersion of those people so that they became a humbler and more honorable breed, less bellicose and more aware of the loving kindness of the one creator. The creation about them tended towards being somewhat bellicose, somewhat oriented towards the enslavement of others, but they themselves, the target of the Orion group by means of their genetic superiority weakness, became what you may call the underdogs, thereby letting the feelings of gratitude for their neighbors, their family, and their one creator begin to heal the feelings of elitism, which led to the distortions of power over others, which had caused their own bellicosity. Question in another session, is it necessary in each case for the entity who is contacted in one of these landings to be calling the Orion group? Or do some of these entities come in contact with the Orion group even though they are not calling that group? Ross says, you must plumb the depths of fourth density negative understanding. This is difficult for you. Once having reached third density space-time continuum through your so-called windows, these crusaders may plunder as they will. The results completely a function of the polarity of the, shall we say, witness, subject, or victim. This is due to the sincere belief of fourth density negative that to love self is to love all. Each other self, which is thus either taught or enslaved, thus has a teacher which teaches love of self. Exposed to this teaching, it is intended there be brought to fruition a harvest of fourth density negative or self-serving mind-body-spirit complexes. Question. Well, are both those who are taken on Confederation and Orion craft then experiencing a seeming physical examination? Ross says, your query indicates incorrect thinking. The Orion group uses the physical examination as a means of terrifying the individual and causing it to feel the feelings of advanced second density being such as a laboratory animal. The sexual experiences of some are a subtype of this experience. The intent is to demonstrate the control of the Orion entities over the Terran inhabitant. The thought form experiences are subjective and for the most part do not occur in this density. Question. Well, we have a large spectrum of entities on Earth with respect to harvestability, both positively oriented and negatively oriented. Would the Orion target in on the ends of this spectrum, both positive and negatively oriented, for contact for Earth entities, I mean? Ross says, this query is somewhat difficult to answer. However, we shall attempt to do so. The most typical approach of Orion entities is to choose what you might call the weaker-minded entity, that it might suggest a greater amount of Orion philosophy to be disseminated. Some few Orion entities are called by more highly polarized negative entities of your space-time nexus. In this case, they share information just as we are now doing. However, this is a risk for the Orion entities due to the frequency with which the harvestable negative planetary entities then attempt to bid and order the Orion contact just as these entities bid planetary negative contacts. The resulting struggle for mastery, if lost, is damaging to the polarity of the Orion group. 
Similarly, a mistaken Orion contact with highly polarized positive entities can wreak havoc with Orion troops, unless these crusaders are able to depolarize the entity mistakenly contacted. This occurrence is almost unheard of, therefore the Orion group prefers to make physical contact only with weaker-minded entity. Don't forget that. They're going to try to manipulate you if you're weaker-minded or you don't know or you're ignorant. Because you're listening to this material, you know about the power of the love light and they're going to avoid you. They're not something to fear. They're afraid of you because you are unstoppable. Question. I'll make this statement and you correct me. The Orion group has an objective, the bringing of service to self polarized entities to harvest as great a harvest as possible. The harvest will build their potential or their ability to do work in consciousness as given by the distortion of law one called the law of squares or doubling. Is this correct? Ross says this is correct. Question, are there other groups of those who are on the service to self path joined with those from the Orion constellation, for instance, those of the Southern Cross? Are they presently working for the same type of harvest with respect to Earth? Ross says, these you mention of Southern Cross are members of the Orion group. It is not, shall we say, according to understood wording that a group from various galaxies should be named by one. However, those planetary social memory complexes of the so-called Orion constellation have the upper hand and thus rule the other members. You must recall that in negative thinking there is always the pecking order, shall we say, and the power against power in separation. Question. By creating as large a harvest as possible of negatively oriented entities from Earth, then social memory complex of the Orion group gains in strength. Am I correct in assuming this strength then is the total strength of the complex, the pecking order remaining approximately the same, and those at the top gaining in strength with respect to the total strength of the social memory complex? Is this correct? This is correct. To the stronger go the greater shares of polarity. Question. Then what do the ones at the top of the pecking order of the Orion group? Let me first ask this. Are we talking about the fourth density group now? Ross says there are fourth and new fifth density members of the Orion group. Question, then, is the top of the pecking order fifth density? This is correct. Question, what is the objective? What does the, shall we say, the leader, the one at the very top of the pecking order in fifth density Orion have as an objective? I would like to understand his philosophy with respect to his objectives and plans for what we might call the future or his future. Ra says, I am Ra. This thinking will not be so strange to you. Therefore, we may speak through the densities as your planet has some negatively oriented action in sway at this space-time nexus. The early fifth density negative entity, if oriented towards maintaining cohesion as a social memory complex, may, in its free will, determine that the path to wisdom lies in the manipulation and exquisite propriety of all other selves if then by virtue of its abilities in wisdom is able to be the leader of fourth density beings which are upon the road to wisdom by exploring the dimensions of love of self and understanding of self these fifth density entities see the creation of that which shall be put in order dealing with a plane such as this third density at this harvesting it will see the mechanism of the call more clearly and having much less distortion towards plunder or manipulation by thoughts which are given to negatively oriented entities, although in allowing this to occur and sending less wise entities to do this work, any success redound to the leaders. The fifth density sees the difficulties posed by the light and in this way directs entities of this vibration to the seeking of targets of opportunity such as this one. If fourth density temptations, shall we say, toward distortion of ego are not successful, the fifth density entity then thinks in terms of the removal of light. And in the 90th session, actually the question I was intending was how, how do they get here? By what means of moving? Ross says, in the mechanism of the calling, the movement is as you would expect. That is, the entities are within your planetary influence and are having come through the quarantine web free to answer such calling. The temptations are offered by those negative entities of what you would call your inner planes. These, shall we say, dark angels have been impressed by the service to self path offered by those which have come through quarantine from days of old. And these entities, much like your angelic presences of the positive nature, are ready to move in thought within the inner planes of this planetary influence working from time space to space time. 
The mechanism of the fifth density entity is from density to density and is magical in nature. The fourth density of itself is not capable of building the highway into the energy web. However, it is capable of using that which has been left intact. These entities are, again, the Orion entities of the fourth density. So that's everything that we have from the raw material. It's mentioned many times in the quo material. I've also mentioned it in several past episodes. So I, I wanted to get some new readings that I have maybe not read in the past. Uh, so in one question delivered on 2019, and I will note that the use of the term Orion becomes less and less in the material. And it's not mentioned a lot of times in the quote material. They just refer to negative polarity. But in one question, Ross says that the service of the self requires an ever expanding use of the energies of others for manipulation to the benefit of the self with distortion toward power. Knowing that negative entities block their orange and yellow rays, I'm wondering if they block their own centers and then, so to speak, steal the energies of other selves to use as substitution for their own blocked power. Quo says, I am quoting I'm aware of your query. We find that in many instances, this is the means by which negatively oriented entities continue to utilize the energies of others in order to observe the self. For if the self is seen in a certain fashion that requires a supply of obedience or admiration, shall we say, in order to learn how to do this, the self then the other self requiring the obedience and admiration then is able to utilize the energy of those about one or about as it provides the kind of example to those who are its followers, shall we say. Thus, in such a sense of negative expression of one's own beingness, the blocked nature of the orange and yellow rays is seen as a means by which others may learn to do the same for themselves, learning thereby how to polarize in the negative sense of manipulation and control so that there is more and more of this energy of others that is necessary in order to continue to exert these energies over a growing band of followers. Gary then asks, so the negative structure seems to require new recruits on a regular basis to provide new power that is then funneled upward. Is that a correct? Quo says, this is indeed correct for the negatively oriented entity pursues the path of that which is not, which is separation, domination, and control. This path requires an ever-expanding contribution of energies from others willing to be dominated and controlled in order that they may learn themselves how to so dominate and control yet others. So it's like a pyramid scheme, and it looks to me like the negative entities draw energy from you with some promise that maybe in the future you'll be able to do what they do, which makes sense. And so they don't have what the positive path has, which is working energy centers from root to crown. They have blocked certain energy centers, such as the heart chakra. They blocked the solar plexus or some other energy centers, and they just use the energies of others. There's so much energy in the heart. It's an amazing thing. This is not normal. And in other readings, it has been indicated that there was no negative path that occurred until there was a third density planet that was veiled, meaning that they did not know about their past lives or that there was a one creator. And once that happened, they started to see the appearance of this negative path. And it appears there's been dispensations and changes. And at some point, God said, if that's what you want to do, I'll create this whole other sort of universe where you explore this potential because these are all themselves, right? In another session, Gary asks, Ra described how there would be a sharp increase of the negative polarity, I believe in their words, in the short run, though maybe misquoting that, and Quo as well has described how the negative polarity is as the dragon lashing its tail, and its time is short on this planet. I recall Quo saying this prior to the past several years when things really have intensified, so I'm wondering if Quo could speak to this sense that the negative polarity has a short time here on Earth. What happens, and when do we see this decrease in the negative polarity? Quo says, I am Quo, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. There is indeed, at this time, the influx of the so-called negative polarity, which seeks to be of service to the self by separating the self from all other selves and attempting to control them for the benefit of the self. This is in accordance with the opportunity for all entities to exercise their free will at all times. And most especially at this time, for this planetary sphere has within its beingness the fourth density vibrations of love and understanding, 
activated and beginning to have an effect upon the overall milieu or quality of experience within this planetary sphere. Thus, the vibrations of love and understanding of the service to others polarity are beginning to anchor themselves in a fashion which will eventually permit a greater reflection of this desire to see the one in all and serve that one with all of one's being for the positively polarized entities. Thusly, there is but a short period of time, as you would call it, that the negatively oriented entities may continue to pursue their chosen path of service to self. This is unconsciously recognized by such entities so that there is a renewed effort made at this time by such entities to exercise a great polarity in the negative sense and thereby achieve that which is called the harvest into the fourth density in the negative sense. Thus the dragon, as it has been called in your holy works, is beginning to sense the end of the opportunity to grow and develop in the negative polarity upon this planetary sphere. The time period that such possibilities may yet remain is unknown for many reasons, the most salient reason being the volatility of this population of entities that is between the two polarities. Having chosen neither polarity, this grouping of entities has a great deal of confusion and is subject to manipulation by the negatively oriented entities so that there may be further negative reflections of experience for the social complexes of your planetary sphere. There is much confusion at this time, and this confusion has a certain kind of lifespan, shall we say, that can be extended by the negatively oriented entities. However, as we mentioned previously, the time period for the negatively oriented entities is drawing to a close. That was stated in 2019 when we were just about to go through another election and there was a lot of stuff going on in the planet. And so we have this particular idea that, hey, we look around the world and we see all these negative things going on. How can we say it's a service to others planet? And it's part of what happens. There's the dragon lashing its tail, which is what I see. I really genuinely see that. In another question asked in 1988 has to do with the negative polarity, negative energy, and its direction towards us as seekers in various forms, whether it might be magically powerful negative entity sending a greeting that has the purpose of disabling you in some way, or a person that just wishes you ill all the way to the potential negative expression through the monetary system and the electronic funds transfer system, where the controlling of the great majority of people is done by a few for their gain at the expense of the many to what allows the energy to be sent and received in a certain fashion? Or how does a seeker deal with these situations and the sendings wishing one ill, attempting to control one or affecting one in a negative fashion? I am Quo, and I greet you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator whose presence is all that there is and whose distortions we are. It is a great blessing and privilege to be called to your group at this time, and we wish to touch and bless and love each especially those whom we have not spoken to before or who have been long from this group. Resting within the web of your vibrations is a joy in the knowledge that you wish us to share our opinions with you. It's a deep joy for in order for us to be of service, we must do to in advance our own studies. We must be asked to offer our opinions and teach what little we know. And we thank you for your curiosity and integrity with which you seek the true nature and purpose of yourselves, of the Creator, and of all creation. To assume that there is a good and an evil or a positive and a negative is to set up the parameters of a game, a game in which positivity and negativity could be measured two feet towards the negative goal, two feet towards the positive. There is no constant that has bias. The biases which each of you bring to the expenses which occur to you are those things which you place values of good and negative on what you experience, your own biases, your own thoughts, your own nature take an unbiased illusion, which is far too great for that computer, which is your mind to analyze and use, and your nature orders that computer to assess certain data. Therefore, you choose again and again what to think, how to react, and what to do. This does not change the unbiased state of the illusion as it is. That which is within your mind and heart is that which determines your creation. We have said it to you often that you are of the Creator and the Creator is of you. My children, each of you, is co-creator, as powerful as the deity whose mystery you seek to plumb. Your universe has been made small enough that you might put yourself to a certain study. For this, you have been given the intellectual mind, which we call your biocomputer, and the many resources of the deep mind. Our voice comes to you 
through this instrument's persistent use of faculties of the deep mind wherein outer and inner personal voices and principles may offer opinion from perhaps a slightly expanded viewpoint with somewhat more experience with illusion. Thus, the first consideration when gazing at dealing with negativity is to examine the possibility, indeed the probability, that the biases which consciously or unconsciously create your choice of data create your world, in other words, contain in them what you yourself would call negative elements. Perhaps there is something within your character which is useful in a way, but perhaps not greatly desirable. Because of the choices that must be made within the life illusion, these negative elements are tolerated because the positive use of them is sometimes extremely helpful in some way, in providing supply, in manipulating those about you in a comfortable way, or in changing that which, in your opinion, should perhaps be changed within your social group your geographical location, or that which you call your nation. Were you to have no negative bias, each na entity with whom you came in contact would appear as the entity actually is, a perfectly unique prism of white light, child of the Creator, an imitable perfect being. The name that you have for one who is supposedly of all positively is saint. You will find that saints do not feel threatened by outer circumstances, whether it be of things or of entities. If you are lucky enough to find one, my children, they are few among your peoples. Now let us look outward. Each of you gazes upon a creation which is completely subjective. All of your instincts and your senses and your abilities greet the day, see the illusion, and feel the pulsing of life within. The life that shall end, and that life shall not. And as you pass along your way, you find those things which cross and disturb one another of the energy complexes of your being. Perhaps it is only inclement weather, and perhaps th that red ray, as this instrument would call it, desire for bodily health and strength curses the inclement weather and finds it negative. Perhaps there is a blockage in your orange ray. Personal feelings ache in a glance out the window at this rainy weather seem to put a negative lid on a sad heart. One more reason to feel negative thoughts. A great deal of the work of your people at this time is what this instrument would call orange ray work. The orange ray center deals, in our opinion, with personal relationships and difficulties of the person within the self. When that orange ray becomes blocked in relationship to another, the negative feeling can be very intense. We speak at first, of course, of those who know each other, those who have said they love each other, and now can find no positivity. Yet the orange ray bias that is blocked is blocked within the individual self first. Therefore, when it is infringed upon by a stranger, it may well receive a very unwelcome mirrored picture of the negative blockage, and thus it is that the stranger is disliked upon sight. The energy blockages of yellow ray, which is an expression this instrument uses to indicate what we would call those energies dealing with societal groups, is also an energy which is frequently rather than blocked. Thus, the news all seems bad. Your games are lost too often, and all those energies put into group effort somehow seem to go awry. Fear not. We're not saying that the problems of the world are your fault. We are saying that your perception of the world is absolutely and completely your choice. Now let us look at the different emphasis upon negative experiences which impinge upon you, the individual. First, let us take the mundane impingement of negativity upon the individual. Those who wish to control others because it is their job to do so are not intentionally being negative. Therefore, their negativity should not be taken personally. Thus, those who attempt to sell that which you do not need, those who wish you to worship as you do not care to, those whose enthusiasms you are invited all too heartily to share, are impersonal negative infringements, which because your own energies are unclear, cause some disturbance in those centers. Now, the point of freeing the red, orange, and yellow energy centers from blockage, the entire and undisturbed fullness of the power of the one great original thought of the one infinite creator may rise to the level of the heart, which is sometimes called the green ray energy center. The other types of negative entity is a specialized one and of interest largely to those who have at some time chosen to begin a journey, a journey to the source of their beingness. This journey takes the rest of the lifetime and of course continues infinitely. Yet it is in this density and at this time that more and more entities are making that choice, the choice to serve the Creator by serving others, or the choice to serve the Creator by serving the self. We are of those who serve the one infinite Creator through the service to others, and so are each in those seeking circle, and in this we rejoice. In this circle, for instance, this evening there is a strong power and a strong light. Those who are negatively oriented by careful purposes 
which they be incarnate or discarnate, have an automatic battle with those spots of positivity which glow too brightly and stand too plainly upon the hills of personal experience. For you see, you as a positive entity work not for yourself in terms of what you may gather, but for others. For it is the normal and necessary experience of one who is on the journey of seeking through love in service to others that a very large percentage of the time that you experience there will be some elements of negative intrusion so that the entity feels not at all positive but sadly out of kilter out of tune these are the productive desserts of testing and temptation in which it is necessary only for the pilgrim of positivity to remain peaceful loving gentle harmless and warrior-like now we say warrior-like in a very specific way we ask that you consider what it is that you do in attempting to serve the one infinite creator. Do you shamble along as a person and put together various collections of pretty things to share in happiness with other pretty people? Or do you wish to live in a life in such a way that is in the end a gift to the one infinite creator, a gift you have made day by day, moment by moment? You've been given help. And we say from our standpoint, we have been given help. All those presences in the universe which are positive await your call. You are never alone. There is always a solid backing of love, courage, patience, and the instincts of the proper time to walk away, waiting for you if you can but disengage your computer. Your computer cannot evaluate the intuitions of positive and negative energy that are at the heart of your work in consciousness. Thus, it is that we say that the most effective way to deal with negative energies is to constant, persistent, faithful daily meditation, which freeze the computer to make connections deeper and deeper down the intuitive and archetypal mind all of your strength all of your universe all of your answers lie deeply within you and that which you learn you recognize and that recognition is the mark of your knowledge and until you have that recognition you do not have the knowledge as a warrior of light you use no weapon but what may be called the armor of light the sword of truth and a wide open heart chakra loving without stint, without expectation of return, and most of all, with no judgment. It is not difficult to love negatively oriented individuals once you can connect into that portion of your deep mind which sees each person, whatever the vagaries of trouble and circumstance, as a holograph of the one infinite creator. This entity becomes utterly essential to you, and you may pray with a full heart with this person and move from strength to strength, from learning to learning. All threat disappears, all separation vanishes. We do not wish you to think that we have forgotten our third density experience. We know that the biases of this very effective illusion make it very difficult to view negative individuals without some alarm. Yet there is no control that such an entity may have over you if you but know who you are, if you know the choice that you have made. A portion of the query which began this meditation spoke of an actual incarnate negatively oriented pilgrim which was attempting by means of the use of thought forms negatively to influence the lives and peace of mind of other incarnate entities. This negative entity has learned how to use the light of the infinite creator. The negative path is very difficult, but it can be walked and light can be learned in its many uses. This is positively. Therefore, it behooves the student of positive polarity constantly to exercise the will to polarize further towards positivity and when negativity is viewed to stop and give that entity the honor of an unstinting love of a generous prayer that it may be held upward that it may be protected that it may be cherished and loved as a child of the one infinite creator we say to you that those who are armed with light and go forth with the breastplate shining offer their love to those who flee before the onslaught of that terrible, powerful, creative love. You cannot possess this love. You can only be a channel through which it may flow. If there is this love within you, even such negative societal plans as those monetary and banking schemes questioned about can only seem that which the world wags on about true in a society devoted to the orderliness of what you call your bureaucracy. Positive individuals are constantly bombarded with those who wish to control you, usually with good humor, with the control seeming to be for your own good, but to the self, this control seeming to be anything but good. It is in these situations where one may see the hidden enemy of the self. It is your negativity that recognizes the paper-pushing negativity of bureaucracy. There is no actual reason that you cannot, in such a situation, constantly center your mind upon the best that you know, 
the love that you have experienced, the light that you have indwelled, the joy that has been yours, not because you wish artificially to change your circumstances and so be impregnable to evil, but rather so you may enjoy yourself and give a lighter, more joyful gift at the end of your incarnational experience to the one creator. For my children, your job is to live a life. Positivity and negativity are passions. There are frames of mind which engage the heart totally. When the student begins the path that he has chosen, he cannot recognize all the positive moments for what they are. He cannot know. He cannot take a positive experience out of a negative one. Yet he can ask to be shown where the center of love in this experience is. This is a function of hope and faith, and each of you dwells within this environment, not yet being saints. And we say, again, there are few incarnate ones. You've not mastered the ability to be constantly loving and giving and caring. You have inner mysteries to beguile you. You have many duties and honors within the world of illusion. All about you says a thing which you cannot believe, that there is only chaos, that there is only chance. Those who have made the choice have made as the basis of this choice the realization that there is indeed a maker, a creator, which created in such and such a way for a purpose. Thus, each of you seeks in partial ignorance and darkness through hope and faith to find more and more that center of the self which truly sees negative infringements as experiences in which a gift may be offered, a gift of love. Perhaps one who has been threatened and is in a state of profound fear may find that we have to say unhelpful, and to such an entity we say that there are those materials available to those who wish to know certain symbolic actions to take. We can only add to this understanding our opinion that these physical acts are ways of focusing the deeper portions of the mind so that the mind may bring up that great material of channeled, creative, divine, immeasurable love. You are not on your own, my children. There are always those who have made the same choice as you who are your companions upon the road. We wish you the joy of your challenges and your victories. Most of all, we thank you for this query. There is a lot more that we can go on. There's a few other references to Orion. In one place, they ask where the Quran came from. It did come from positively oriented being but there may be negative influences in it is all they said there is some other questions in this material for instance after september 11th they asked if that was a responsibility of the orion group and they said it most assuredly was a result of their manipulations in any case it's very interesting to contemplate we hear about federations all the time which one is the federation and if they come to you speaking of love and light, but they aren't, even this one, how do we know that the quo material and the law of one material is not coming from that place? So all we can do is ask our hearts and our hearts may know the answer to this stuff. But it's very interesting to think that there have been forces at play trying to manipulate this planet. And it's exciting to see that we're going to overcome it. But understanding Orion in this particular sense is very interesting and the idea that they have attempted to manipulate in the past there's a lot of other material out there i'd love to go over maybe for this the idea that the dinosaurs were the original reptiles and the orion group were part of humanity's creation that they're portions of the orion group now in nowhere in the law of one material do they equate the orion group with reptilians you get a reference to reptilians in the Dolores Cannon work, and they do mention an opposing federation in the Dolores Cannon work. So then you have to ask, what of it's true? How much of it is it is authentic? And then you start to look at this information, and you get people on YouTube channeling different galactic federations. Which one is correct? Sometimes you get the impression you can tell that that's being manipulative. The ones that, for instance, talk about slave ships. Well, that's interesting. That. First of all, there is an Orion reference in Star Trek and they're slavers. So, but some people will paint these ridiculous stories saying, oh, they're negative and evil and they're drinking the blood of young people as a form of manipulation that was used all the way back in World War I, after World War I with the Nazis. So we have to be careful with this information that we get. And 
I just suggest staying in the moment, trying to find where love is in the moment, learning the lessons of love. This is all fun, but it's not critical for you to understand. It's not crucial, but it's interesting. And I'd love to get your impressions of the Orion idea. It's always interesting. There's people in the comments that say they've been incarnated or reincarnated from Orion. And of course, if Orion's like the galaxy, then there are positive Orion groups and there are negative Orion groups. I'm sure of it. And I'm sure that it's not just one vast Orion group. And I'm sure they don't call themselves the Justice League of Evil or the group of evil or whatever it is. So there's a lot of manipulation and subtlety. Manipulation often uses lies. They will lie to you. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear so they can take your energies. So we need to also be aware of when we're giving our energies away. I think the final passage really says a lot that I just read of Quo, and that is once you choose service to others, that you begin to have a power that you didn't before. And you might encounter people from the negative side that are even going to take your money, like they talked about in this last one, that are going to use magic against you. And some of that you're creating yourself is a reflection of your own self, as they said in that last answer. Some of that is how you've created your reality. But also, if it's legitimately negative entities that are at work in this particular story, then you have to know that the power of the love and light within you can stop them. And that through meditation and embracing this love and light, you're now protected by making this choice. So I'd love to get your comments. Are you reincarnated from Orion? Are you one of the agents of Orion? Am I wrong about Orion? Which galactic federation is the correct galactic federation? Tell me the answers. Put it in the comments. I want to know. Put a like on this for anybody that needs this information. Maybe it'll come to them. In any case, all episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.